And welcome back to another edition of On the Board Sports. I'm your host, Will Cherucci, a.k.a. Will C, coming to you from Gotham Podcast Studios in Manhattan, New York. And I have a very special guest with me today. Joined from NBA Buzz yep. is the one and only Mike Domagala. Well, Mike, I appreciate a- you having me on. Absolutely, man. I know we just did a show earlier, and we talked about you and your basketball, talking about the NBA and talking a little bit of M- MLB p- playoffs. and. Yep. What had happened last night between the Dodgers and the Nationals and the Cardinals and the Braves and what might happen tonight for the Rays and the Astros. But we'll leave that for the past show. We'll let the listeners go in. Mike, how are you? I'm good. Our our first episode that we just did was great. Um, Great communication between the two of us. Great chemistry already with me just meeting you. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we're both New York sports fans. And, you know, we had similar NBA picks a little bit, MLB a little bit similar, and, you know, we had a lot of fun. Right, right, right. And, you know, getting to see you being the big Nick fan and getting to see you just basically just going out there and talking. And it was really fun to to see you talk about your, your product and your brand and seeing that all grow and come to fruition. To me, I think that's a real phenomenal thing. And maybe one day on the board, sports will be that. Yeah, I think it will. So just to refresh, because this is uh, the second episode, mm-hmm. I'm Mikey Domagala. I run and own NBA Buzz on all platforms, so have a total of 2.5 million followers across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and I have my own show called Inside Buzz with Mikey Domagala on YouTube, and that could also be found on the social media platforms. Absolutely, man. Just You, you do a great job of doing it, so it's just awesome to see you just Going out there and doing what you love, man. More people should do that. Yep. No, I think they should, too. If you got a passion, you got to follow it. Absolutely. And, you know, even if it's going to take a long time, I'm 20. I've been doing it since I'm 12. It's all about the grind. You know what I mean? You got to get to the higher ground. You uh, you got to grind to get to the higher ground. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm, you got to stay consistent on social media, gain followers, tons of social media strategies I've learned from just doing it mm-hmm. that, I could, that I've shared with you and can also share with you on air if you'd like. And, uh yeah, man, I'm excited to talk some more sports. You know what? Let, let's go. Let's dive into that first, and then we'll go. We'll go and talk a little, a little hockey and a little football. Uh, how did you build up your brand? So staying consistent and posting NBA highlights early on, stats, making unique posts through Photoshop, Keynote, and all that early on helped. So that built it up, and you get stuff to go viral. You get a, a lot of new fans. Then over time, again, you got to still stay consistent, unique. I've I haven't not posted on the page since 2012. So every day it's posting. Um, so Facebook, you got to stay consistent. You got to follow their algorithms. You could monetize your videos and make money and stuff like that, articles. So that's all unique content that people like to engage with. On Instagram, it's the same thing. Instagram is more networking, though. You got to stay consistent and do your thing and also reach out to people. You got to respond to people in comments similar to Facebook. Right. You got to, you know, follow certain people, DM certain people, and just grow the brand. Mm. And what people want to see is something they haven't seen before. So if everybody's posting the same old highlights, same old things, you got to make mixes. You got to make certain stat posts that stand out, certain fun facts that you could dig up, all stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I I touched on this, and I spoke at Manhattanville College last year for a master's program in sports and social media. Right. Um. If there's no sports, social media wouldn't be what it is today. Mm -hmm. Everybody is on their phone, and everybody comes across something in sports on social media. And what the NBA has done by allowing people to reproduce their content like I do and, you know, make your own changes to it, that's great for branding. Right. Social media is branding. What you do is branding. What we're doing right now, when you put your podcast on Apple, branding. So social media drives that. What I do with NBA Buzz, it's just all branding, reaching out to people, and gaining an audience. Absolutely, and you do a very, very good job of that. Thank you. You know, my 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 thing for you now is you mentioned followers and everything like that. You know, you've been doing this since 2012, and it's amazing how you haven't been picked up yet by like a Bleacher Report at all or, or anything like that. One guy that had that had found himself through his own campaign, House of Highlights. I'm sure you probably heard of him, Omar. Oh yeah. You know. Have you met Omar or have you like had any conversation with him at all? Or? So I haven't met Omar, but I'm very jealous of Omar. And the reason is when I started in 2012, Facebook was it. Right. It was about a year or two before Instagram. I should have gotten on the Instagram wagon earlier. I got on it like two years ago. Mm-hmm. 
but I dedicated all my time to Facebook. If I had that following on Instagram right now, I believe I would be something like a house of highlights. Right. And I mean, I've had a great journey so far and it's been great and everything like that. And I'm still jealous of House of Highlights because they're, you know, huge company. And to be picked up by something like Bleacher Report, kind of with the brand, I just put out stats and videos and stuff like that. But I would personally want to work for a Bleacher Report. Right. And I'm 20, you know, I'm a journalist, I'm going, looking into jobs. That's something I would love to right, do. Right, right. And you go out there and, you know, you do it. You, you do it every day. Uh, you know, one app that, kind of intrigues me in a sense is uh tiktok everybody's hopping on that tiktok train now i just hopped on it last night so i jumped on tiktok i saw another page was doing it and i'm like i could do that easily so you know i started it it's called official nba buzz like my instagram and i'm gonna post obviously nba content and i'm gonna bring in fans to not necessarily bring in like to engage like personally but engage fans videos what they want to do if they make funny nba videos right highlight tapes whatever almost like an po overtime type of thing yes right? okay. so you you post that stuff mm -hmm. and then that attracts the fans to the tiktok then you start getting some stuff viral and there you go there's how, another platform how do you get how do you get viral is it all about hashtags and stuff like that hashtags is big on instagram and that helps you put you in the discovery feed right i mean getting viral it's a it's about the unique content and getting lucky so it's also about who follows you. So I'm always DMing certain athletes, um, commenting on their stuff, telling mm -hmm. them to follow me, just, you know, just staying in the loop with them. Yeah. So some big name followers I have on Instagram are Darius Miles, Ben Wallace, Wally Zerbiak, I mean, Alan Hahn. Right, right, right. So when people in the NBA field see unique content that they haven't seen before and want to share it, right. now they share it. To their audience they share and their audience might consist of other nba players and other nba personnel and that's how it gets bounced around right and S i'm sorry to cut you that? off no that's right no so it, it it's funny i don't want to bring up a personal story with me but when i was 12 years old i always wanted a darius miles jersey right okay okay so my mom she took me to the nba store when it was on 52nd and, and 5th avenue okay remember, do you remember yeah, that yeah okay not not the one that was on uh -huh. 47. Yeah, I remember they, the other one. They, when they monetized yep. it and they made it smaller. The, that was back when the store was huge. And was that the one that went all the way down? Yeah, it would, it would have the, the circular the ramp. Right, it would yep, have the circular yep. ramp. That was the best store ever. Shout out NBA store, by the way. <laughs> but regardless of the fact, I wanted a Darius Miles jersey. I, every time I put on Sports Center, I would be watching Clippers highlights. Mm -hmm. And me being a Laker fan and, you know, having the – see Kobe and Shaq, you get to see this young team coming up with Lamar Odom and yep. Darius Miles and Quentin Richardson. I mean, that was pretty cool. And when they we, when Darius they, Miles they and had Quentin the knuckleheads. Right, they would do this. That was cool. I read that on The Athletic when years later. But the funny story is like I bought I bought his jersey. I bought, okay. you know, as a kid, I bought Darius Miles' his jersey and I'm saying to myself like, okay. This is back in 2002. Back before a D, uh, Reebok and, you know, they took over Champion, mm -hmm. yep. all that stuff. So my mom got me a Darius Miles Clippers Champion jersey. Okay. Red. Read the, the script, yep. you know. And then three months later, in July, he gets traded for Andre Miller. Mm -hmm. and To Portland? No, to Cleveland. Cleveland, okay. And my heart broke. <laughs> my heart legitimately broke because... That brand I, new jersey yeah, of yours that that can't new, be worn. Right, right, right. And I'm saying to myself, damn. So then the following year, the following year, it's about NBA draft time. LeBron's about to get drafted or he did get drafted. And I forgot who it was. I don't know if it was my friend's mom or whoever or my mom. My mom, I think it was my mom. My mom bought me a Lamar Odom jersey. Okay. The, the blue alternate with the script. Mm-hmm. You know, the the seven, the the heat on Reebok. And I wore it a couple of times and then he signed with the heat. I was gonna say, I think I know where you're going with he this. He signed story. with the heat. And I'm like, No, <laughs> no, I've I loved Lamar Odom. You know what I mean? I love Darius Smiles. Yeah. But then it's like 
in my head, I'm like, okay, I got to start paying attention now to the contract years coming up with yeah. the buying jerseys. I mean, there's that. And can you imagine these fans this past season with all the change? Oh, my God. I wish Fanatics was around back then. Mm-hmm. You know, and what Michael Rubin does is absolutely phenomenal. As far as, you know, the Jersey Assurance yep. program, I think that's great for, for fans. But, uh, you know, just wanted to just share my yeah, story. Yeah, no, I mean, that. that's an awesome story. And to get back to some social media stuff, yeah, you know, for you, having guests on like me, I push the show. Right. That's all just free advertising, great stuff. That's why when you have guests and guests and guests, the word gets out there. Alan right. Hahn probably told some of his people, his family, oh, I'm going on this show. There's more listeners. It's all about networking and grinding hard to network correctly. Yep, yep absolutely. And, you know, We've had on a lot of guests, but I don't want to digress onto the show because it takes up so much time. If you mm-hmm. want to, just type in on the board sports on the Apple Podcast app, and you'll see the shows and everything like that that we have recorded and who yep. we've had on. So it's been a fun ride, to say the very least, for Sean and I. And I wish Sean were here in studio. We're on the phone right now, but you know he's doing his own thing, and I, I totally understand that. He's it's working. Right. So it, it's me and you right now, hey, Mike, for the listen, next I love hour. Listen, we're so, do- We're just... You know, talking it up. Yeah, talking about whatever. So, I gotta, I gotta ask you now, or even see what's going on. We'll get into football in a minute. Hockey. I know mm-hmm. you're, you're, a, you're an island guy. Yeah, not a big, not a big hockey. Yeah, not a big hockey guy. But come on, you gotta admit the Islanders, Islanders. Being back on the island is actually pretty cool. Yes. If I were to choose, I'd be an Islanders fan. I'm not big into hockey. Being at hockey games live, I've been to a few. Awesome, awesome atmosphere. Right. And, you know, just to touch on the Islanders and their move, right, Belmont? Right, to Belmont. Belmont, years. I think that's great. You know, people people weren't liking the Barclays Center, right? No. And I think this Belmont move, it's going to be a, you know, revolutionary new stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, great location. Right. You got the Long Island people in the east. You got Manhattan right to the west. So and I think Queens. And Queens, and you know. Brooklyn, yeah. Yep. It'll attract a, a lot of great, great fans. Absolutely, and it will, you know. The thing is now with, with the Islanders, they started off the year one and two. I'm going to go on a little rant here with the Islanders. Okay. I'll make it short and sweet. For the fans that say that, oh, the sky is falling, or Lou Lamarillo doesn't know what he's doing, or no, nobody. Listen, we're three games into the year. Listen, it could be worse if you're a Knicks fan like me. So, uh, Well, you, know. you have high hopes for this team. Uh, a little bit. This year. But with the Islanders, you're three games into the year. I get that people... They wanted Robin Leonard back, and I met Robin. Again, Robin's a great guy, nice guy. But you don't know what, what we're going to get out of year two from from anybody, whether it be Grice or Leonard for that matter. We signed Volomov here. Volomov is coming off of a year in which he, he lost out his starting spot to Philip Grubauer, who came from Washington to Colorado. It, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of moving pieces here, Mike. But the mm-hmm. point is, is that you signed Volomov to get – this young kid, okay. Ilya Sorokin, who's supposed to be one of the better goaltending prospects that the Islanders have had in a really long time. And is that the one in Russia? Yes. Okay. See, at least you See, know. I know a little bit. Yeah, you know a little bit. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of things going on here. You know what I mean? Like, the, oh, you know, it, it's not a, sometimes you got to look at it like it's not about, yeah, you're, you're, you want to win a Stanley Cup, sure. I, I understand that totally to the fullest extent. But it's all about, Afterward, Lou has a plan. Lou sees things. Lamarillo won a Stanley Cup, three Stanley Cups with the New Jersey Devils. He tra- he changed how the Toronto Maple Leafs have looked since you know since 2015, and they were an abysmal team. And now they're one of the powerhouses in the league because of him. And now the Islanders, they have the new arena coming up, in which nobody thought would have happened. You know, yeah, the double arena situation sucks, but whatever, it is what it is in that regard. 28 games playing at Nassau now and 13 at Barclays. But that's besides the point. You want to get people here in the long run. You yep. can't look at it from from the span of this year, oh, this year, mm-hmm. this year, this year. Everybody gets, everybody gets caught up in right now. Yeah, you it's want, a process. It's a business. I was going to say, you want people to buy in for years. Right. So, you know, new home at Belmont. I don't know much about hockey or the team. Right. But if they're going to build, like the Knicks, a foundation – you need people to buy into that process. Trust oh, yeah. the process, as Joel Embiid would say. Absolutely. And, you know, with this team right now, listen, they're rusty. They just got a new power play coach in Jim Hiller. 
there's a lot of things going on. Scott Gomez last year and at power play was absolutely atrocious, but it's three games in. This team started off last year bad as well. Robin Leonard was like four and seven in his first eleven games in, and they wound up taking off in December. <laughs> so that just goes to show you like what can happen in the NHL season. There's so much parity, excuse me, in the NHL as opposed to, you know, any other sport, you know. Now, I want to ask you kind of a general question about hockey. Sure, go ahead. In the NBA, if you don't have talent, you're not winning. I know hockey, you know, it's about like grit, grit and grind type guys. And I mean, there's obviously skill in there. Okay. Is there, how much does skill play into hockey and how much does hunger and determination of a young kid who works extremely hard, like how does how do those two play together in hockey? I'll give you the young and, and great. You look at a guy like a Matthew Barzell, right? The guy is an absolute stud. 22, 21 years old, doesn't really get talked about that much in the New York media because of the situation that he's in with the Islanders. He's one of the top players in the game, but he has that grit, he has that determination, and he wants to be great. He wants to be here. His skills and his play dictate to what the fans see and what mm-hmm. the fans want. He is a stud without question. I think hockey is all about teamwork. If you look at teamwork, everybody's involved. Power play, defenseman, you know, there's no there's no play off in hockey mm-hmm. as far like, you know, time yeah, off. Yeah, you in can't hockey. take a play off. Right. Yeah. Like in the NBA you could sit out, not sit out. If you don't want to defend, you just stand near the guy. Yeah. I know what you mean with hockey. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you have to go out there and defend. I've never played hockey. But I'm a huge fan. I love it. Give you a quick story. Four years ago, I was huge in the basketball. Okay? You get to see all these guys. I got to experience and watch Game 7 of the 2016 Finals, one of the better finals Mm -hmm. in recent memory. Okay? And then when Durant went over to the Warriors, I just couldn't watch it anymore because it's the same thing over and over and over again. He put a stain on the league. He did. But you, we could say the same thing about LeBron going over to Miami. But that's, that's true. Different time, but I see what you're saying. Right, but that was just a, a, a precursor yes. to what Durant did. But whatever. Needless to say, I get into hockey. The fans are into it. They're smart. They're passionate. And, you know, you look at the fan base with the Islanders. There may not be a lot of fans, but they're loyal. Mm-hmm. They're loyal to their team. There's not a lot of fans in the NBA that are like that. They're more Very about true. they're more about the individual, yep. And that's because of that's because of the branding and the world that we live in now. Mm-hmm. You know. So like when LeBron went to L.A., how many people? Oh, I'm a Cavs fan. Now I'm a Laker fan because of LeBron no, and the aura around him. Right. Nobody, well, not necessarily you. I know you've always been a Lakers fan. But. Right. Nobody knew what LeBron was when he was with Cleveland. You know, prior because Cleveland was a shithole. Mm-hmm. You know, with the classic blue and yeah. Oh, black. You, you mean before Miami, before all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blue and black uniforms yeah. back when they had. Yeah, you might like LeBron the player, but yeah, you don't like you don't the, like those you teams. don't like Cleveland the team. Yeah. You don't like Cleveland the city. Exactly. You know what I mean? But if you do and you follow that, hey, kudos to you for being a fan. I I totally respect that. But there are people out there that are bandwagoners. Yep. Which I can't stand, but whatever. That's need, needless. Needless to say. You know what I mean? That and, and that's that's new in sports. Yep. Because of I would say LeBron. Yep. LeBron going to Miami. Yep. That's where it all started. Yep. And you also too, like you look at uh as far as hockey players like grit and determination, those like I'm not again, I'm not a hockey player. I'd never played hockey, but trying to skate is one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> trying to trying to learn how to skate and trying to, you know, Learn how to do everything. It's a tough thing. While while hitting the slap shot, right? You, know, you got you got it. You got to keep your balance. Uh-huh. You have to look at the puck. You have to see who's coming in at you. And you have a guy coming in at maybe thirty miles an hour coming at you, trying to get the puck. Mm-hmm. It's a physical and demanding sport, and they don't get paid a lot. True. And because of the triple cap, the salary cap space in which they're in, they should be making that that money but because of tv deals and tv revenue yep. it just doesn't help out and i know i kind of spoke about this that the nba commissioner lets you know their highlights go out and to be you know branded like that all over social media right not that i don't follow you know i don't follow too many hockey pages the islanders i follow the rangers 
but you don't see their highlights all over the place as much as basketball and football. Because right? nobody cares about hockey in New York, and it's such a shame. It's true. It's such a shame. You know, when I was a kid growing up, I grew up in Whitestone, and all we did, my friends and I, we would go to the park, we play basketball, we wouldn't we play baseball for a little bit, but we play basketball every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to different parks, we see things, and also too. You look at it, hockey. You have to buy equipment, sticks, skates. You got to get on the ice. On the ice, you have to train, everything like that. Okay, and as you get older, some of the stuff may not fit you anymore. So you got to buy new equipment. It's true. With basketball, all you got to do is just get one ball, and five people, and there's a hoop people, anywhere. And there, right? Yeah. There's a hoop anywhere, and you can play. That's what it comes down to. People Very can relate point. to that. But as far as hockey goes, like. It is such an underrated sport. It is. And I think there should be... Why aren't there viral videos going around on social media of guys beating the hell out of each other? And nobody wants sick, sick goals. I know like some you know, nobody like wants crazy to see, stick work nobody, gets on. Nobody wants to see fights anymore, man. You know what I, I mean? want to see it. <laughs> I, uh, it it's, it's dying out, Mike. Uh -huh. know, it really is. Well, that's just because of the world we live in. Well, not only that, too, but... There are people in the game that don't want to don't want to see fighting. Mm -hmm. The co the common casual fan wants to see it because it draws attention to it. But the way how hockey's played and the way how it should be played, going back years ago, is you know just to be a gentleman sport. Mm -hmm. And you look at all all these players that have stayed on their teams for their respective years and have held captaincy roles like a Sidney Crosby, like an Alexander Ovechkin. John Tavares prior to him moving to Toronto, which was the worst thing ever. Yeah. For but it wound up being the best thing, somewhat. Uh you know, there are other captains too that that I that are on the tip of my tongue right now that I can't mention, but you know, it's just like it, it's just like it's more hollowed, you know what I mean? Like there's more there's more of a story and a legacy to it in hockey. I see what you're saying. You don't see that in basketball. You don't see a captain in basketball. Because you said this earlier, because they don't stick around. Right. You know what I they mean? They don't. The Warriors, I mean, Steph, Clay, and Draymond, off the top of my head, other than maybe, like, older veterans, who's sta who was, you know, drafted by the team and stayed with the team, had right. success with the team, and wants to be there. Right. Not just wants to bounce around. See, that's what sports are. Like, especially in the 80s and 90s, you'd see that loyalty in any sport. Now, basketball, you know... I feel like has rubbed off on some other sports and guys just want to leave. Look yeah. at uh, Jalen Ramsey, right? That's his name on – oh, is it Ramsey? On the Jaguars? Yeah, on the Jaguars. He's still on the team. Yeah, but he wants out. Right. Just because your team isn't having success, that doesn't mean you just automatically want to leave. That's like that with a lot of players, though. And a lot of players you have to understand, too, coming from the college situations that they've come from and – from the high school situations that they come from, they came from winning programs. It's true. And a lot of these fan bases and a lot of owners, scouts, they look at these guys and they're like, okay, this guy has to come in and play, but it's a team game at the end of the day. You mm -hmm. understand? Yep. So if you don't have the team right in place right now, you're not going to do well. Especially if there's no chemistry. Right. And that's why I believe – Antonio Brown's never going to make another NFL roster. He's an idiot. I don't think – just because – I know I keep saying hungry and determined, but you could find a, co a come-up receiver who wants to be there, who wants to work hard, and wasn't Julian Edelman, like, undrafted or something? Or so, I'm thinking of Antonio somebody. Antonio Brown wasn't a first-round draft pick either. He was a low draft pick, and he worked himself up since yeah. he was with the Steelers. Then it just got to him. A, I, I don't know if it was the hit from Perfect or whatever, but <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel bad for the guy in a sense. I do too a little bit. You know what I mean? But just, dude, like you go you go on. See, that's the thing with social media. Like it could be a blessing oh, and it could be a curse. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And we could have these conversations right now about it, sharing our opinions and voicing it, but we're not in the mind of Antonio Brown. Exactly. You know? I think social media got to him. The money got to him. I think he was valuing money over – just playing. Right. You're a you're a top tier athlete making top tier money. How many people get to do that in their life? Right. Tiny, tiny, tiny percentage. Right. And he's kind of giving himself, you know, an out to not have all that. Yeah. It's like self-inflicted removal from a team. 
Right. Based off his actions. Yep. And not know, a fan. Eh, it's crazy. Now he's out of the league. Just shows such a talented personality too. It's it's like sad almost. It is. You know what Wait, I mean? It's like from Bronxdale. Yeah. Waste, waste of, talent. of talent. Yep. Saddest thing in life is waste of talent. But you know, on that note, speaking of football, you know, Mike, I know you've been paying attention somewhat really, you know, you know a little bit of football. Yep. You know what I mean? Not you, a not a big football guy. Right. Uh Big NBA and Yankee fan. Right. I got a fantasy football team. I know the players, know all the top guys. But uh, I know I know you're the pro here, my man. Somewhat, to a degree. I'm a Jets fan. I'm a diehard Jet fan. And from what I saw on my birthday on the 6th, when the Jets played the Eagles, dude. Oof. Yeah. They were close. The defense held, held it you know, together for mm-hmm. them. But, again, when you have a guy like Luke Falk going out there on basically three days and the Jets gave Sam Darno all that practice time, it's like – Really, you, you couldn't do half and yeah. half, you know. And you got to see the dinks, the dunks, and what they've been doing now for the past three weeks since uh, Sam went went down with mono, and now he's back. But I don't know. I'm feeling an upset this week. I don't know about you. you it's know? possible. Who, who are they playing? Uh, the Jets play the Cowboys. Cowboys this weekend, and the it's going to Cow- be a tough one. Oh yeah, it's going to be a, a huge game. You have Dak Prescott coming in. Ezekiel Elliott, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is one of the more talented receivers since he's very consistent as well. Right. Since he, you know, got traded from uh Dallas over to uh not, not Dallas, since he got traded from Oakland to Dallas. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things right now. But Dallas though, they came off of two very bad losses. They should have won that game against Green Bay. And I they believe sh- and they they had the game against New Orleans in New mm-hmm. Orleans. It was a very close game. But, you know, regardless or not, it's just something that's that that's really remained to be seen here. Yeah. You know, on that note, with we're going to go into picks. All right. Basically how this works. Sean, I think, had, he's winning right now by, like, five wins in picks. Okay. So he's got, like, 40 or 41. I have, like, maybe 35 wins or something like that so far. I got to look at the number. Okay. And bring it back next week, but see how many wins I could get this week. Right, so we'll we'll include Sean in this, and you know, I wish you, I, I want to get your picks, and you know, he'll shoot me over the text with the picks and everything like that. So, I just want to make a note. Yeah, go not ahead. not a big NFL guy. But I know a little bit. Don't know all the ins and outs, but I'm gonna go based off, off matchups what and what what I know, what I hear. Okay, fair enough. First game. Thursday, Thursday night football. Giants going up against the Patriots. Giants are two and three. Patriots are five and zero. Oh. Patriots are twenty one and two in October games since two thousand and fourteen. Who do you have in this game? Mike? All right, in NBA terms, this is last year's Golden State Warriors against last year's Atlanta Hawks. The Giants, you know, Daniel Jones is, you know, he's looking good. He's playing good, but without Barkley, still out. Patriots are going to demolish them. Patriots are going to demolish them. Okay. I'm going to have to go with the Patriots here as well. I think it's going to be a closer game than, than one realizes here. Okay. But I'm going to have to go with the Patriots here. They're just too much of a dominant force. Number one defense, but, yep. you know, we'll see what happens They've here. been showing out on defense, that Patriots team. They have been. Oh, yeah. They have been. Moving on now to, an up to the Sunday game, the London game. They're going to play this game at 930, our time yep. here. Panthers and Buccaneers. Carolina is 4-0 since... Mr. Allen starts in 2018, and they're 0 and 9 in all their other games. Who do you right. have in this game? Um, I'm going with the Bucks. Okay. I've been impressed with with by what Jameis Winston's been doing the past few weeks. He's been hitting Chris Godwin so much. Godwin's a top tier receiver, and he's got Mike Evans. I mean, what more can you say? And uh, the Panthers, I mean, they've had some success, I believe, but yep, I'm not rolling with them. Absolutely. Uh, it's a good good question right here for them. Oh, man, just what more can you want? Panthers offense right now ranks 12th compared to 15th for the Buccaneers. Buccaneers defense is really bad. 28th compared to 10th. I'm going to have to go with the Panthers here. They, they're just playing great. I know they might not have uh, Christian McCaffrey either, but I'm going with the Panthers. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that too. Absolutely. All with right. the McCaffrey stuff. Yep. Moving on now to our first set of 1 o'clock games here. We have the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Minnesota Vikings. Both teams are 3-2. and two. 
And the NFL's second leading rusher, Dalvin Cook, versus Philadelphia's top-ranked run defense. Mm -hmm. Mike, who do you have in this game? Uh, Eagles got a good defense. I'm not liking what I see out of Kirk Cousins, right? He's their starting QB. I mean, he did have a solid week against the Giants, but it's the Giants. It's the Giants. Um, Adam Adam Thielen, Thielen's a beast. Right. I'm going Eagles. You're going Eagles. Eagles offense ranks 23rd. Their defense is 12th. I'm going to have to go with the Vikings here at home. Vikings defense is 5th. Their offense is 16th right now. Their passing defense, eh. You know, their passing offense, excuse me, is 28th in the league. But yeah, their rushing offense high. is just absolutely great. With that said, give me the Vikings at home. Moving on now to the Redskins and the Dolphins. I think this is probably a... Uh, oh, baby. Uh, yeah. That's an old team, baby. Both teams are winless. This is probably the worst game of the league. Somebody, yep. Somebody's got to win here. Well, let's just hope it doesn't go into overtime for a tie because that would be pretty sad. Uh, I'm going to go with the Skins because why not? The The Dolphins haven't shown anything all season long. No offense, barely any defense. New head coach. They fired Jay yep. Gruden. And, you know, man, look at some of these ratings right now over here. Oh, man. Dead, dead last. I'm going to... I'm going to have to go with the Dolphins here. They're going to get their first All win right. of the year. A little surprise pick. Yep. First, this is the first matchup of winless teams in week six or later since 2004. 2004? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Moving on now, this might be the game of the day here. Got the Texans going up against the Chiefs. Chiefs are 4-1. and one. Patrick Mahomes has a 15-0 and career record in non-primetime games. Does that streak keep on going, Mike? Yes. This is going to be a shootout between Mahomes and Watson. Um, Mahomes is coming off a little bit of a maybe a half slump, right? He didn't really get in the end zone too much the past two weeks, I believe. I think he's going to be slinging it against that Texans D, and we'll finish with three or four touchdowns and the win. At, and they're and they're home too. Mm-hmm. And they're home too. Uh, both defenses are not that good, but I got to go with. I'm going to have to go with the Chiefs here at home. I think they pick, picked themselves up after that that horrible loss. Not horrible loss, but really a downright uh, yeah. brutal game to lose, especially close to Jacoby Brissett and the Indianapolis Colts. Hey, can't take anything away from Houston, so yep. give me the Chiefs at home. I think this is a bounce-back game for them to win. Moving on now to the... Saints and the Jaguars, 1 o'clock game. Jaguars are the home team. Teddy Bridgewater has won six of his le- seven road starts. Saints are 4-1. and one. Jaguars are 2-3. and three. Uh, Mike, who do you have in this game? Okay, I'm going to go with the Saints because I like Gardner Minshew. I love what he stands for, his whole image and everything like that. But through the first three quarters of games, he hasn't been doing much. He's been leading good drives in the fourth quarter, and that's kind of where he's getting his yardage and his touchdowns. I think Bridgewater, you know, Bridgewater's got a ton of pieces on the Saints. So yeah. Kamara and Michael Thomas, I think, will uh, will lead them to victory. Saints right now, their offense is ranked 18th. Their defense is 20th. Passing offense is 15th compared to 19th. Jaguars are right there, man. Listen, you talk about Gardner Minshew. Top five offense in the league right now. And really? That's eight. what they're ranked? Yeah. Wow. And they're passing, they're passing offense is ninth. Rushing is eighth. Fournette's by been nice. Leonard Fournette, but their defense is 26th. With that said, I like the Jaguars at home. Give me the Jaguars here. Okay. Moving on now to the Seahawks and the Browns. Browns are the home team. Browns coming off a brutal loss to the 49ers yep. at San Francisco. Russell Wilson has won five straight games versus the NFC, AFC North. Excuse me. It's the AFC North. Mike, who do you have in this game? Browns are home. I don't care that the Browns are home because I think um, Baker Mayfield's been slumping. Odell Beckham Jr. hasn't been playing like Odell, and you know, I don't think I don't think I see them winning this week, even though they're at home, even though Chubb has been nice recently. Chubb, I think, got hurt. Really? Uh, yeah, Chubb. Oh, I, I got him on my fantasy team. Oh, not good, not good. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with the Seahawks here on the road. I know the dog pound is a tough place to play, but. For Freddie Kitchens and company, they had to really pick themselves up here. Browns are just absolutely atrocious. Oh, yeah. I know they're coming back home, too, but give me the Seahawks at home. This is, uh, I mean, on the road. Russell Wilson is just a beast. 
and they have a top si- top six offense. Mm-hmm. So give me the Seattle Seahawks on the road. Moving on now to a classic AFC North rivalry between the Bengals and the Ravens. Bengals are 0 five. Ravens are three and two. Ravens lead the NFL in scoring offense this season at 32.2 points per game. Mike, who do you like in this game? There's one name for that stat, and that's Lamar Jackson. Um, just because the fact that Lamar Jackson's on the field and he could, you know, his passing has improved since last season and his rushing is Mike Vick-esque. Right. So I got the Ravens. You got the Ravens at home. I'm going to have to go with the Ravens here too. Their passing offense for the Bengals is a top 10 unit. They're ranked eighth in the league, but their rushing attack is horrible. Their defense, these defenses aren't really doing that hot. <laughs> but with that said, give me the uh, Ravens at home. It's going to be a real close game here, but I think the Ravens do sque- squeak it out here. Moving on now to the 4 o'clock games, we have the San Francisco 49ers. They're 4-0 going up against the Los Angeles Rams. Battle of high-flying offenses led by Shanahan and McVay right now. Mike, who do you have in this game? Uh, who are the 49ers playing? I'm sorry. The Los Angeles Rams. The Rams. Hmm. This, is, this is a tough one. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo has been playing nice. Um... He gets all of his guys involved. That that team is good. Do I see them staying on top and undefeated? No. I'm going to go with the Rams. I think it's wow. their time you, to fall. You, you, like, you like the upset, especially yep. with the Rams at home. Okay. The San Francisco 49ers have the top-rated defense in the league, but their offense is 21st right now. Their rushing attack is ranked third, though, compared to... Uh, I like defense here. I'm going to have to go with the 49ers, and they're going to stay hot. I'm going to have to go with the 49ers here at winning this game on the road at L.A. Moving on now to another 4 o'clock game. We have the Falcons and the Cardinals. Falcons are 5-1 and one versus the Cardinals in the Matt Ryan era since 2008. Both teams here have flopped big time. Yep. Who do you have in this game? I got the Falcons for the only reason that uh, Kyler Murray gets sacked a lot. And I don't know if it's not that they're protecting him if he's staying in the pocket too long. I'm going to go with the Falcons, even though, you know, like you said, both teams haven't been hot. I'm going to have to go with the Cardinals here at home. I think, you know, looking at it, I think they play for Bill Bid- Bidwell, the former owner that passed away. And they're going yeah, right. to have a lot on their mind right now. And they're going to want to play that game hard. And, you know, with the Falcons, yeah, they have a top 10 offense, but their defense is just as bad. The question is, can they stop Kyler Murray and his feet? You know, True. they got a game plan of up against that. And with what happened with Bill Bidwell and, you mm-hmm. know. That might give them some inspiration. Yeah. To so, play harder and win the game. Yeah. So give me the uh, Cardinals at home in this game. Moving on now. Sean's Tennessee Titans are going up against the Denver Broncos. Broncos are the home team. Titans allowed, allowing fewest points per game, 15.2 in a season since 2008. That's the year that they started off 10-0 and and they wound up finishing the year 13-3. and uh, Mike, who do you have in this game? To be honest, I don't follow either team and I, I know either team isn't exactly, you know, popping off the charts. I'm gonna, I'll go with the Titans. You're going with the Titans on the road in the mile high air. I'm going to have to go with the Wow, it's, it, this is a tough matchup right yeah, now. Looking at the stats, thing. man. But I'm going to have to go with the Broncos here at home. I'm going to have to go with the Broncos here at home. I like what they're doing right now. They've been close every game. They could be mm-hmm. a fringe playoff team at best. Give me the Broncos at home. Yeah, see, I would, my pick is for that. I think Mari, uh, Marcus Mariota's got to gotta have a Marcus Mariota game. He's he, got to prove himself, though. Yeah, he hasn't he has been doing much. Himself. Moving on now to – this might be – a real interesting game here. Yeah, the Cowboys, they're 3-2. and two, Going up against the Jets, they're 0-4, but they do have mm-hmm. Sam Darno back. They have a couple pieces coming back. I expect this game to be close, but, Mike, I want to hear your take on this game. So I think it's going to be close based off their Green Bay matchup last week. I feel like they kind of let their guard down against them for some reason. They right. couldn't stop Aaron Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Le'Veon Bell pops off this game, and I think it's going to be close. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to the Jets. I'm going to give it to the Jets An because upset. of Darno. An oh, upset no. over here. Okay, I like that. I'm going to have to go with this being my upset, too, of the week. I know Sam Darno might have a little rust, and the Cowboys, they have a lot going on for them right now. But top, they're number one in offense. 
Their defense is a top 10 unit. I get that. They're passing. I don't know. I think the Jets get off the schneid mm -hmm. and get their first win against Listen, the, the, the Cowboys, Cowboys opened up against, you know, not the best of teams. And that's why were they 3-0 or 4-0? Yeah, they were 3-0. Yeah, 3-0. Yeah, you know, strong start. Lost to the Saints in the and Dome. Then, and uh, then they went back Packers. over to Jerry's World against the Packers. So. Yep. So who knows? Yep. Hopefully I, the Jets pull it out. I think they will, too. So give me the Jets at home. That's my upset special right there. Uh, moving on now to the Steelers and the Chargers right now. This is Sunday night football game. Steelers are on the road. Who do you have in this game? Chargers, most definitely. Um, you know, Juju Smith, Schuster, um, he's still him. He's still a top receiver. But it's to, it's about who's throwing to him and right. the chemistry they all have. It just seems off. I'm going to, you know. Got it. I don't think I see them winning. Okay, so you're going with the Chargers. I'm going to have to go with the Chargers here as well. They got a lot going on, and Mason Rudolph got hurt again, so. Not looking good for the Steelers quarterback situation it's right true. now at this point. And our final game of the week is the classic NFC North rivalry between the Lions and the Packers. Packers are the home team. They're playing at Lambeau Field. Mike, who do you like in this game? So I just traded for Aaron Rodgers in fantasy because I need a quarterback desperately. Mm -hmm. Got two guys on a bye. I'm going to go with the Packers. I'll be, I'll be watching that game just because Aaron Rodgers is mine in my fantasy team. And hopefully he shows up. I'm looking at the numbers right now. Lions have a top-ranked defense. They're ranked. They eight. have been special. And, and, Matt, and Matt Patricia has been really playing them really, really well. They're two one and one for a reason, and Stafford's been playing good. Uh, but you know, with that being said, I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to go with the. I'm gonna have to go with the Lions here. I'm gonna have to go with the Lions here it's on fair, this one. Fair, definitely fair. You know, I think they finally zoom in on this, and I think Patricia, being the defensive genius that he is finds out what goes on with the uh, Green Bay Packers. So, you know, remains to be seen. I like I like the Lions on the road, too. So give me the Lions on the road. And with that being said, those are our picks, and that's the show. So what more can you want, Mike? It's been great. Both episodes were great. I didn't expect to come on the second one, but, hey, it was a lot of fun talking sports for you, even if it's NFL, hockey. Listen, I, I was just gaining knowledge on the Islanders and the NFL. Absolutely. So it's, it's all great stuff. You're welcome back on the show anytime, man. Well, I appreciate it. Again, it's been great. Third time's the charm, shaking hands. <laughs> oh, it, on it, camera. It might even be the fourth, to be <laughs> honest. You know. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Mike, how do the people follow you? So that way, I know, listen, you came on the show. You mentioned your social media yep. stuff. Hey, you could always plug it even more. So uh, check out it. NBA Buzz on Facebook. Check out official NBA Buzz on Twitter and Instagram. You can also look up Inside Buzz with Mikey Domagala on YouTube, and I, pup, I put all that onto my social media channels where I interview NBA players. And everything else, Will, where can we find you? You can find me on social media at Will Trucci on Instagram. post a lot of Islanders stuff, but a lot of people get, eh, so they, they don't really know what's going on with the Islanders. But whatever, that's the point. You got to show them love. Also, follow me at Mikey Domagala on Instagram. That's my personal you want to follow the show's page you go follow us at on the board sports that's o n t h e b o a r d sports on the board sports and if you want to follow us on twitter you can follow my personal handle at w chirucci that's w c h i a r u c c i and the spelling for on the board sports is just on the board sport no s on twitter we got to okay. start using our twitter page more you should and our Instagram page a little more bit. too. Yeah. yeah, Instagram Instagram is cool to get, to gain some people and like, network. Like, like Kevin Durant says, it's cool. It's yeah, cool it's cool. It's a cool thing to do. All right. All right, it's been great. Thanks again. Absolutely. All the listeners listening, thanks for listening to me, even if my NFL picks were a bit off. And Thank you guys. Our picks might be off, so that's all right. For everybody here at Gotham Podcast Studios, just want to thank Johnny for controlling the ones and twos right behind us. The great Johnny O'Hagan, truly, truly an awesome guy to say the very least. And for Mikey Domagala from NBA Buzz. Yep. Really great time having you on, bud. I appreciate you coming on, you know, sacrificing your day to come talk with oh, us. It was a pleasure. And not to sacrifice anything. Talking sports on the radio, nothing better. Absolutely. Can't wait. I'm your host, Will Trucci, logging out. We will talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Thanks, guys.